Hello, welcome back to the workbench. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe down below, uh, give us a thumbs up, and thank you. What we're doing today is taking a look at this F-150 2015 model new bright RC car. It's not all that interesting in its own right. It's got a servo up front and a DC motor to drive it in back. But I'm curious what the electronics package is, because what I'd like to do is replace the electronics in here, as simple as it is, with an RC kit from uh, either an Arduino or an ESP8266, something quickly and custom made that I can just swap out an entire electronics package, hook up the servo motor driving the front, the DC motor driving the back with, and then add in a uh, standard other side, same deal, ESP8266, Arduino, whatever, remote control, so that you can control the car possibly with a little better accuracy since the controllers on these tend to be something like this with just an up-down on both ends and to go left, right, and forward, backwards, and it doesn't tend to have any granularity on the control for the motors, and it also doesn't tend to work that well. And there's nothing really wrong with the RC car itself, aside from its obvious cheap build quality. It would probably be fairly fun to use with a variable speed controller that lets you ramp it up faster and slower, and some finer grained left-right steering, possibly an improvement to the rack in this thing, but maybe not. It might be perfectly fine. It, it's probably functional enough anyway. This one I got used and it wasn't in very bad shape. The tires don't look like they had too much wear on them. I don't know what's up with the pink wheel nuts in the back. That looks a little strange. I... No, I have no idea what's up with that. But So there are some odd things about this car. It's got a uh, hole up here for a older antenna model, probably 27 megahertz, because that's what their other models were, I believe. And uh, it's not, it's a 2.4 gigahertz model. So I, th I think what they did is just use the older chassis, whacked in the new electronics with the short little antenna. The USB adapter has kind of a really crappy strain relief in it where they just knotted it and left it in the hole, with, you know, kind of not getting any more play in there, but that's, that's uh well, that's objectively horrible. It does have a USB for the charger instead of a battery pack or AC battery, or I'm sorry, AA batteries in the back, and you just charge it up with that. I think that's working, but I'll have to check the batteries too. So let's see what the electronics package is in this first. I'm guessing it's not going to be too impressive, but that's okay. There is a huge cavity in here looking in there where we can add our own electronics later. So that'll be good. It's actually probably more suitable for the purpose I want to put it to than it was for its original purpose. There we go. That was easy. And it's got a molded cover. It's tiny. See, there is a huge cavity in there to add whatever the heck you want in this thing. So for that, it might be fairly suitable. And that's it. We've got two lithium ion batteries, fairly small, 320 milliamp hours. That's, well, 3.2 volts, so that's uh, that's a uh, 1.02 watt hours. That's not too bad, since they're at 3 point something volt. The 320 milliamp hours actually works out a little bit more than, say, with a nickel hydride battery. Ah, and here's our electronics. That's That actually looks pretty good. Let's see if I can hold on a moment. Let me zoom that in. So these electronics are pretty clean anyway. I'll have to take a look at exactly what's on the board populating it, but as I suspected, there's a DC motor in the back, this one. There's a servo motor in the front, this one. We'll take those out in a second. And then a couple of batteries and some control circuitry. I would conjecture that they use this board for different things where these functions aren't currently being used for anything, so they're just jumpered with a with a zero resistance jumper. Actually, there's a lot of those on there. And there's our antenna. That's actually the antenna for the 2.4 gigahertz right here. It doesn't really go anywhere. It's just probably, hopefully, to length for the, for the bandwidth. You could probably figure out what the distance is on this, make sure it's properly sized, and then add in a, a appropriately larger antenna to get a little bit of range on it. And the capacitors all look okay. Let's check and see if we're getting any voltage off those batteries. I'm curious if they're 
if they're actually functioning. I don't see, these are life posts, so they're not, uh, let's see, FPR 13 slash 40, they're not lithium polymers. Hold on a second. So these are lithium ion phosphate batteries. I had to go look up the part number. The HFC 1340s. So they're a bit more stable than the batteries you find in uh, cell phones, but they're also a bit larger and they have different recharge characteristics. If I remember right, just from memory, please correct me if I'm wrong, these actually last a bit longer. They'll take discharge and charge cycles a bit better for the trade-off that you don't get quite as much power out of them. Okay, so what we have here is a voltage controller and some custom Newbright circuitry. These are the control chips. They're just marked for Newbright. Crystal, another voltage, some supporting circuitry, and the batteries. That's about it. I'd conjecture that this is probably a battery controller and that's probably the uh, smarts for the entire entire unit, the motor controls and logic. All right. Hold on a second, let me get this back zoomed out. So there's the electronics. Let's see if the battery has any charge left on this. All right, both batteries are testing out okay. 3.4 volts should be fine. So that's good. Let's see what the servos look like. That's the last thing in here. Now, what I'm expecting in here is the standard servo that you find on eBay or AliExpress or any other sale site. One of those little jobs. I think I've actually got one over here. Hold on a second. Let me see if I've got any on the shelf. Yeah, what I'm expecting is something like this. But we'll see what's in there. For the price I got this for, that actually wouldn't be a bad source of one of those if you needed it in a pinch. For two or three dollars, that's that's pretty good for just that servo alone. And in this you get the servo, DC motor, a couple of batteries, some switches, I guess. Although, those are a bit hard to depopulate off the board, so... I'm not sure if you'd actually want to use it for that, but you could. So that piece was just snap fit on. It's actually got, I probably could have examined that a little more carefully, but I'm not that concerned. If it doesn't have a front grill, that's not gonna be the end of the world for what I'd like to use it for. All right, that's just got one press fit connector. And we're out. Oh, okay. So that is just a straight little DC motor. Let's see what we've got here. Wow, interesting. So they're relying on the gearing in here to stop it on the locks. It's probably being driven with low torque, hopefully. Unless there's some feedback control to make sure it doesn't hit the, hit the locks hard and break anything. So that's our front motor control, and if you see, the, there's a spring right there. That's what's providing the tension to bring it back to center. And this is controlling that so that if you twist it, it leaves it locked in a different position. So that's all pretty simple. You could probably give this a little more tension if you wanted to make sure that it always stays in a specific spot, hopefully center, I suppose, if you're using it. And I don't think the rear end is going to give us any surprises, but let's see what's in there. This, I was assuming, was one of these DC motors. The front, I'm a little surprised on, but that's cheaper. Those servos are a bit more expensive, so... With the price point they're trying to make these two, I suppose it's not that surprising that they'd use the cheapest possible motor. Ah, there's more latches. Here are the wheels. There we go. 
And there's our rear gearing. So they're stepping up the gears to give it a bit more torque. Whoa, and those aren't really sitting in anything too well. They're just loose in plastic, so that'll, I mean, the wear on this is obviously gonna be very quick. There's not too much holding any of this together. So this is designed about as cheaply as you can get. Two DC motors, a bit of gearing to step up the torque, and that's it. For all that, the control board actually isn't that bad. If I had any way to communicate with it, that'd be great. Although it might not actually handle more than just dead on, dead off, which isn't that useful. Well, not that good anyway, so. So that would still kind of suck, and I'd still want to put a custom, custom control in there. And that's it. That's all there is to this thing. So even if you were going to use this stock, you might want to provide a little bit of strain relief on here. Just hot glue this thing in place or something so that it won't flop all over the place. And then when your kid pulls on it or whatever happens, I'm sure this would just get yanked and immediately destroyed. I mean, at least I know my son would immediately destroy that. So probably not great design there. And these are all set up the wear pretty quickly with everything just sitting in ABS plastic. But, but as far as a project goes, this has a bunch of neat parts in it that you can reuse. And I uh, hopefully will have a package up so you can take cheap RC remotes and turn them into more useful actual RC cars or control them remotely with a computer or whatever fun project you want for, you know, three, four dollar RC. Hopefully, when I get the electronics package together, it'll be, you know, five dollars for parts and uh, won't, won't end up costing more than the actual car. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.